They can't be doing that. I don't need to see that again. Welcome everybody <laughs> to Catfish Weekly, along with Josh and Chad and our special guest, Hooks and Hammocks, Chris and Tilly. Welcome, you guys. Um, there Hello. Are we. Hello. I thought we were having Chris and Fratelli on. Uh, <laughs> no. 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 That would be me. No. <laughs> Y'all get me. <laughs> you guys are... Uh, you're not really on the Ohio River, but you're fishing the Ohio River, right? Well, we're about a half mile up the Licking River from the Ohio. But that dumps into it. Yes. Which dumps into the Mississippi, which makes it a tributary, right? Yep. That's right. Yeah. Yes. It's, it, it's what create creates 85% of the Mississippi River. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who told you that. I like that. <laughs> They're mistaken. Make that number here. I don't know. 73 percent of statistics are made up on the spot. So yeah, I, I read it on. I read it on. I read it online one time. It must be true. <laughs> it's everything. It's true. Everything. If you read it online, holy is crap! True. It has to be true then. That's yeah. just you're right. He says, "Yay, it's the real telly." I agree. <laughs> I agree too. That's for sure. More. Mark is saying hello, so why don't we welcome everybody in the chat, fellas? Let's do it. All right. We got Mr. Mike Sampson. What's up, Sampy? Avid Fisherman. Downtown Ernie Brown. Size Matter Catfishing. 351 Cleveland. Member Fishing and Freedom. Want to be outdoors. I believe my wife is in the other room dying. Really? Yeah. What? What? Uh, she called for the in here. Crappy Dave oh. Fish on. We got Mr. Dave Funk. Member Mark from Catfishing Crappy. He had that pleasure of hanging out with me all last week. It was nice. Every time you see it get dark, you got to touch that screen. I John Patrick that. Jr., Mr. Maurice Case, and KP take down catfishing. Member get hooked on deep fishing. We got Feeling Caddy, Pam Hollinger, Mr. Dale Hayslip. LG Tomcat, Whisker Dreams, Rods and Reloads. He also he also got the pleasure of hanging out with me this past week. He, <laughs> he just it, made an awesome video too. He he said it was a kind of a dream come true. He, he had a dream come true. JG Hill Studio, member of the Weekend Angler, Freddy's Outdoor Adventures. Bumpin' Mike Greenwell, 922 Crappie Barbecue, Uncle Lou, and I am to the bottom, gentlemen. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. 52 people watching now. Thank you all so much. We appreciate <laughs> it. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to us. And if you want to, you can join the group down below. Um, Chris, I have a couple of questions to ask you or Telly, either one. It's not a... Um, it's not a uh, gender specific question, but in all of the videos and live stuff that I see you guys on, I have noticed that uh, your image is really clear and that your audio is extremely good from almost any position in the boat. And my question is, what kind of camera and microphone system do you use? So when we're live streaming, I'm using an Android because that's the only phone you should ever use. I agree. <laughs> when we are videoing, it's mainly, well, it's 100% a GoPro. It's either yeah. the GoPro 9, and then I, I have another GoPro that occasionally we'll use for maybe some takedowns or something. And it's so old that I don't even, I don't think it has, a, it doesn't have a number on it. So I don't know what it is. That but is the one. audio part is 100% luck because I have no microphones. Um, wow. It's just pure luck. The reason I ask is because GoPros are not known for having real good quality audio. But yours, is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Uh, Tilly is excuse me, actually facing the other way, and I can hear her nearly as clear as I can you. Well, now our phone is bounded just a few feet away from us right now. So okay, well that's that's amazing. So in audio. other words, you think we have very angelic voices? Whatever. That could there be, yeah, yeah. Like, like, we, like I, I never between Turkey and Jesus. 
I'm <laughs> why not? I'm not sure I have ever heard that word before, so I probably should not <laughs> ever use it. <laughs> well, that's because you're usually hanging around with those two knuckleheads on screen with you. Oh, I know, well. but I, I enjoy that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lyle, you'd be impressed at the amount of current we have in the Licking River right now. Really? We have so much current, I just threw out a drift sock, and it's almost opening. <laughs> <laughs> I that hate when they get like that. That would impress me. I um, I have seen Lake Ozark like that uh, last year, or the year before. I think it was year before. Um, and it was really, really high and rolling. Lake Ozark's not known to ever have current in it, and I could have bumped in it. Chris, oh, touch wow. your screen. Really could, but it's um, not black. I know. No, but it's doing the zoom in, zoom out. It's doing, yeah, thing. it's doing what mine was doing the other day with that zoom in, zoom yeah, out. Yeah, it is. I just caught it. Yep. Interesting. My, my phone has not done that at all huh. since everybody else has started experiencing it. Now all of a sudden, it's yeah. Do there's it. a, there's a there's, there's a bad nice. update somewhere. Did Chad touch your phone all the last week? Probably. Okay. I, I have to say. Um, there was a bunch of live stuff that went on last week, and, and I enjoyed watching it since I couldn't be there. Um, and you giving Chad that rod was probably the highlight of the week for me. That, that was pretty cool. Let's I not bring it up. I already cried once. I watched that. <laughs> um, I watched that. Well, enjoyed it very much. You know, there's there's usually a reason I do things. I mean, it's. I mean, do even if I was, <laughs> even if I was going to keep that rod, I still would have rubbed it in Chad's face. But I'm quite sure. That. <laughs> oh yeah. But that that was that was the reason for the uh, for bringing it up so much. Well, that was really it was really uh, heartfelt for me because, like I say, I remembered that rod once I seen it um, and what it, how it got. I don't know who got it or why it got around like it did. But it looked to be in nearly as good a shape as it was uh, when I sent it off. So I don't know that it was ever fished with. I it. don't know that he ever. I was getting ready to say it, it's had very well care taken of it. I, well, I mean, the guy that the guy that I got it from said he used it. I mean, he was the one that puts that reel on it and the and the braided line and everything. But uh, I'm guessing I mean, I, that rod's probably ten years old or so. Oh wow. Oh, wow. I just I wanted when he when he said that he had it and he was going to sell it I wanted to make sure it would go to somebody that would appreciate what it was and knew what it was and Josh said he didn't want it so I gave it to Chad. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, I'll have you know I wow. took it back to my tent and we cuddled all night. I bet you did. <laughs> Oh my god. No, 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 if somebody gives you a fishing rod and you decide to cuddle with it, take the hook off of it first. Mm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that's how. Are you yeah, going to tell me where you got that hook stuck? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> we probably don't want to know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Man. Parker Pursuits has made it in. Parker so, had just, some good fish this weekend. Just so everybody in chat knows, you're going to see our boat swaying a lot. Our baits really aren't moving. They're all settling in. There's just no current here at all. Even if I throw an anchor, it's going to do the same thing. So, I mean, I've got a drift sock out. We're spot locked. We're just going to let it do what it does, and hopefully the fish will show up. Well, I'm going to let, I'm going to let these two uh, ask you guys some questions and visit a, in, a, in a minute. But um, – the other thing that I had for you too tonight was um, you've had your new boat for a little while now. Uh, how do you like it? We like it. We just wish it was bigger. Need a little bit more room. That's, That's And if you got the biggest one they make, you'd still say that probably. <laughs> they, get, they get to a oh, point. Oh, I have no doubt. Yeah, they get to a point, though, where the wind hits them broadside and affects them makes them hard to load and impossible to run. Mm -hmm. uh, like like mine has an enclosure on it. If you have a big, uh, anything bigger than about a 20 or 22 foot, when that wind hits enclosures and stuff, you can't do anything with them. They're just, they're, you they're very scale. ill. And um, 
I don't recommend stuff like that. Anything other than a bimini top for, for anything bigger than a 22 foot. That's just my opinion. You know, a lot of other right. people have different opinions, but um, especially for loading in the wind. Oh my God, they're horrible. But uh, yeah, ours is an 18. I wished it was a 21. They made a 21 just like it. I wish I had a 21, but I don't. And mine's paid for. So I'm, I'm, I got what I got. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah, we yeah. saw uh, Chad saw it too. We saw a Lund down there at the boat ramp at, or up there in Mendota. It was a really nice boat, mm -hmm. but it set so high up out of the water that had those high sides. I was like, man, look at all look at all that wind catch right there. The, yeah. the Aluma Craft I had was like that, but the trailer that it was on, it loaded so good. All you had to do was get it on started on the bunks and just gas her up and it'd go right up. So yeah, that was a nice big twenty one. That's, that's nice to be able to them Lunds are, Lunds and Aluma Craft are probably the nicest boats in my opinion in the aluminum market today. And I know guys will say, oh Northwoods this and uh them boats made out west that you're not going to beat a Lund or a Lumacraft. They're just the best, period. And I prefer the Lumacraft over the Lund just because I had great experience with uh, the sponsorship boat that I had. Uh, but Lund boats are amazing. They, they really are. And you can't sink either one of them with the amount of flotation you got in them. And not all of the boats on the market today have flotation. <coughs> sink leave it at that. <laughs> So, Lyle, you're saying you need to know when my birthday is? No. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for offering. <laughs> so you don't ask for stuff for Lyle for your birthday. You, you get stuff from Lyle at Christmas. <laughs> oh, okay. Remember, Caitlin wrote letters to Santa Lyle. So. She did. That was so That's right. She did. <laughs> that, that was amazing. Okay, guys. Oh, talk, uh, Chad, I forgot. We have... Um, Tournament result. I didn't forget. I got them up right here. Uh, you're awesome. All right. We got the MBT Catfish Trail. Uh, we've got, let's see, we'll go with the top five here, Lyle. Coming in okay. fifth, we got Richmond, Stockton, and Pope. They had five fish for 28.39 pounds. In fourth, we have with five fish, we've got Bex and Bex at 29.96 pounds. In third place, Newbie and Messersmith, also with five fish, 40.5 pounds. In second place, we've got Little, Surf, and Keller, five fish for 41.64 pounds. And in first place, we've got Parrish, DeBusk, and Lockridge, five fish for 43.14 pounds and a big fish of 11.93. Nice. Very, very nice. Can I close that? Oh. Seen some more folks that had came in here. I seen David Altizer, Pontoon Jody, Jello. I said hi to Parker Pursuits. Parker Pursuits in here. Mr. Outdoors fish in on. with David Scott. Frank. Fish Anderson. on. Fish on, yep. fish on. We got a fish on. Oh, it came off. It came it's off. Oh, no. It came off. And took the bait. And stole the bait. Oh. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Bluegill. Bluegill. Hope you don't have the guard moving in on you. <laughs> Creel says wow. his next boat will be a custom made know. by a local <laughs> builder. No one sells. Really, what what he really wants? Just wait for the lottery. What, I'm thinking that's when one that of the lottery comes in, it. you better build that house first. Yeah. That line cut went right across my hand. Trying to make <laughs> see here. I'm not believing, so we're good. Oh, that old Mike, other Mike is in here. I see yeah. Greenwell's in here. Yeah, not, no, not Mike Greenwell, the other one. Huh? Curtis Montgomery. AKA the wife whisperer, love the show. <laughs> that that was on the suspended rod. Ah, Frank wants a little. You know, uh, he has suspended a suspended rod. Right? Cindy is one Cindy caught most catches most of her fish off of right beside the boat. Mm -hmm. And I don't. 
I can't never catch nothing on them. Small water says premature jubilation. I call it premature settilation when you miss a fish like that. I'm not gonna. Oh, this was. Yep. It, that rod was buried in the water before she even got it out of the rod holder. Well, so you probably knocked it off. Shut your face mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm making sure I just run through the comments real, real quick. I'm flicking grass on you again. <laughs> <laughs> she was she tickled herself to death earlier. Oh my today. gosh. We were up it we were bad. up on the Ohio just below Meldal Dam and we were getting ready to leave to come over here. And we were reeling everything in and had some grass and weeds and stuff on some lines. And she flicked some grass or something. And it smacked me right in the side of the face. <laughs> and stuck. Nice. And I, of course, you know, I, I'm thinking it's old nasty catfish bait or something. Oh, man. And she was giggling. She got ready to cry. Oh, my Lord. I was. It was, it was funny. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, my God, where'd that go? And he's like, oh, my God, what's on my face? Did you get that <laughs> on video? I don't think it was like that. <laughs> I, I don't think it sounded quite like that. Did oh, you get it on record. video or a picture of it, Telly? <laughs> no. No. Oh, man. Oh, that would have been perfect. I was laughing so hard, I was crying. <laughs> so my first, my first question is, does J-Dog know you're fishing in this spot? He will when he comes up here. Sure. Well, if he's watching Catfish Weekly, he, knows. he probably does now. He does now. Because I know, I like know I that work that you're set up on. We wanted to run all the way to the mouth so we could get some current and be able to sit still. But that barge, when we when we stopped here, the barge was just on the other side of that barge. So I knew we weren't going to make it before you started the show. So we just stopped here. Okay. How much trouble do you have finding signal out there on different areas of the Ohio River? Uh, I mean, we're not very far. I mean, we're only a couple miles from Cincinnati right now, so okay, nothing right through here. You don't really have any trouble. Other places, you know, down in Chad's neck of the woods, where they don't even know what a cell phone cell phone is. They should. He thought it'd been a river enough. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> You know, we fight that problem up on Truman a lot. You get one area and you got a good signal, you go um, a half a mile and you got zero. Mm -hmm. And it's Truman Lake is like that all over, but I think it's such a rural area that has a lot to do with it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Freddy's Outdoor Adventure says, we know where you're at. We are just around the corner, Chris, and he is not happy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, the title of tonight's show though was the cat catfishing power couple. Yeah. I mean, as you as Chris has mm -hmm. told me that you all are the number one catfishing couple in the community. So, so we need that's another one of those things we need to add to the show that so we're gonna have a, a bait shop show that's we have everybody up, everybody that Chad's ever lied to, so they can tell their stories, and we're going to have to add that one into it, because I never you said You can something. only put 10 people on StreamYard, so is this going to be a multi-week <laughs> show, or are you going to cycle people in and out, or, or how does this work? Yeah, well, we'd have to. We'd have probably, we'd have to pull out the green wheel. <laughs> there you go. So, so you're saying that green wheel would be the last person to go on that show? <laughs> He'd never get on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I want to oh, say Mikey. hello to J-Dog and Queen Tara. J-Dog and Tara. Hello, hello. Says, Mace says, everybody, me, J-Dog, Tara, and Mason on the water and listening. That's yeah, awesome. awesome. They're probably half mile, three quarters a mile that way. The other direction. So, is the back of your boat pointed towards the Ohio or away from it? The back that Ohio River is that way. Okay. Okay. So they're up the Licking River. Yeah. Yep. No. There are a lot of great couples though, and I was kind of playing when we set this up though. But 
you guys are a very notable, prominent couple in the in the catfish community. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, shot. Well, thank you. And you know, we have the award-winning Telly on here with us. <laughs> so, you guys are the couple to beat. <laughs> so, Telly, are you, are you still mm -hmm. cooking on online? Yes. Okay. We, we are home when we're home long enough. Yes. I understand. So, Roger, they were actually headed out there, but there was a barge mm -hmm. set up down there, so they didn't get to go out to the actual Ohio mm -hmm. before the show started. Yeah, we could, no. we could probably get out there now, but we weren't going to make it before the show started. Right. So I will ask, so what made you guys move? You guys were up river a ways, and then you moved down here to the, the licking later on today. What, what made you guys uh, decide to move? Well, there really was quite a bit of current up there below the Meldal Dam, and we're not familiar with that area. I mean, I've been there once. And uh, we caught a couple fish, and then we weren't catching any more. And J-Dog and Freddie were out there way longer than we were, and they didn't have any luck. And they left to come here, and I was like, well, I don't want to be out there. Once nightfall hits with that current, and the boat ramp over there is not the greatest. Very so true. we decided we're familiar with the licking. Let's go ahead and head here. Plus, the licking is on our way home. So now we're 30 minutes closer to home. Yep, absolutely. Sounds like a good plan. It's not fun. So I guess the Ohio is rolling pretty hard then right now? Well, right below the dam, it was – I mean, I spot-locked in it, and I was running at 9 to stay put. Now yeah, it's running hard then. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's pretty hard. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked at um, the thing in a couple of days, but I know it was – in the it was going up the, and down and let's see here it was like two to three mile an hour last yeah. time i looked with shawnee town down here by us is running two hundred thousand, so it's a little bit down from where it was but not by much i don't say that to make lyle giggle when i say two to three mile an hour but yeah i know it's lyle and uncle lou they love to talk uh, about that don't they? well you know mississippi river at chester is flowing <laughs> three hundred and sixty thousand. so <laughs> a little bit different. The um, the dams on the Mississippi when when you fish the dam areas, uh, you better know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that it can't be fished because people have fished it for years, but it's not like what you guys deal with on the Ohio. No, we, we and we know that. I, they had three or four gates open up there at Meldall. I mean, we didn't. We ended up, I recorded a track from just below the boat ramp about a mile up river, which left us about a half mile from the dam. And that's as close as we got. And then we suspend drifted. Well, I call it suspend drifting, but I actually recorded the track. And then I used my trolling motor. And this is kind of, this, this is a little bit of a tip for people because it was working. As long as we didn't get too much of a side wind. But if you record a track with your trolling motor and after you end that track, back off of it just a little bit and tell your trolling motor to go to the end, but don't give it enough power to get there. And then you will go backwards down river and stay pretty close to that track. Huh? Pretty pretty good idea. Really good idea. Yep. Now it's not perfect. And if you got any side wind, that the problem we were having was we got some yeah, side wind, wind and it would blow us up towards the bank and I'd have to reset. But when that wind wasn't blowing, it we were staying really close to the track I recorded. Very nice. And you, yeah, you, you're welcome. You love those tracks, right? Oh, yeah. I love recording tracks. I have never that, recorded a track on mine. I do everywhere I go. Yep. I love to. I'll find those channel ledges and we'll run a mile to um, anywhere from a mile to two mile track on the channel ledge. And then usually I will run it down river if I can and then turn around and come back up river. If we don't have enough current that we can drag. Of course. Right. But, uh, and then once you do that, I mean, you know, you're going to be on the track. You don't have to worry about anything. Maybe turn around once in a while, watch for debris and barges and, I, I get mine so full of tracks, sometimes I have to take start over. <laughs> See, now, I, I'm the opposite. I, I don't ever keep them. 
Oh, I keep them all. It, it, especially if it's somewhere on a track that I caught a lot of fish, mm -hmm. I never delete that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, you know, like I, I didn't delete when I was at Taylorville Lake, I had a track recorded when I caught that 86 and I wasn't about to delete that track. Right. And then that remote took crap and I had to get a new remote. Fishing and Freedom says, Chris, make a video of how to make a track. I have never recorded one. Don't hey, know where mm -hmm. to start. Well, Richard, well, it's funny you, it's funny you mention know. that because I have a video on how to do all that. <laughs> there you go. But it is on the Catfish Conference YouTube channel. Ah. I'm with. I'm I'm very, with go ahead, I'm Chad. With, I'm sorry. No, I was say I'm with Justin. I have. I don't think I've ever reacted. I have never a recorded a track. Oh my god, it's amazing. I love it. I love oh, yeah. track. I'm gonna have to mess with it, but I have never, I've never done it, I've never tried. And it. you can, you can do it with your motor stowed and on plane, and it will still record. Really? Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. That's I what that. I wondered. I wondered if you had to do it with the trolling motor to make nope. it. Nope. nope. Oh, wow, that'd be. Yeah, I knew that, but like you, you know, we were up there at Mendota, and you had asked me if I was, I was running tracks, and I was like, nope. I'm old school freestyler. Correct. Freddie and I recorded three tracks there, which were basically the same thing everybody else was doing, going around in that bay. And then we had one that was going diagonal across it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how many um, tracks does a remote even hold? I don't know. Ah, I think it's like 50 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. But, they'll, you know, you get to put them in there. You go to the same place three or four times. And if you're, especially if you're bumping or, or drift or suspend fishing, you go back over that two or three times, and you got all kinds of marks there. You, mm -hmm. can't, you, can't, just, you can't really tell where you've been, where you haven't been. Yep. Sometimes and then uh, another thing, too, is with re when you're recording those tracks, it's like, you know, when I first opened the remote today to record the track, I had tracks still in there from Mendota. But when I recorded the track on the Ohio, and then I said go to, it only shows the one on the Ohio because it it'll show you the closest one you're, you're setting to. That's neat. Because I would be hoping it would take me back to Mendota. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be a long boat ride. That'd be a very long boat ride. That's true. Don along. Welcome. We're glad to see you in chat tonight. But yeah, that, that video on the, the Minn Kota trolling motor that we've got on the uh, Catfish Conference channel, I think that's the best video I've ever made. I, I really am. I'm really proud of that video. Me There's too. my grandson Mason who's made hey, it. Yeah, welcome, buddy. Welcome. Nice hello, hello. Um, Greenwell says you can change the colors on the depth finders to make you sure you don't run the same track. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's true. You can change. Yeah, you can change that line on your depth finder track. Yeah, I've never played around with the colors on the on the. <clears throat> tracks that it leaves but i've got i've got some areas that are completely covered so yeah that's right here's some Irwin, we're paid tourists welcome into chat buddy we're glad yeah. to see yeah. you in here normally when i get when my garmin gets that many tracks on it i just clear them and start over <laughs> i've got one that i've saved and that's it and it gives me my safe line all the way up and down the river and then i'll run a different one as I'm out messing around and clear it every so often when it starts to run out of space. But. We used to do a lot of night fishing, which I don't do so much anymore. And when we was on the Missouri and the Mississippi river, I felt like that the tracks that we recorded was a lifeline for us to get in with, because mm -hmm. if you are close to that line and yep. you didn't hit anything going up or down, you're not going to going back. Yep. Uh, and, and when they've reset those um, buoy markers on the on the big rivers, and I'm sure the Ohio is the same way, they reset them a lot of times right after the spring floods on the Missouri and the Mississippi. They got a big barge goes down there with a crane on it, and they'll pull them them uh, buoys up, and they'll put them where they're supposed to be. And when they put them where they're supposed to be, you'll be surprised how close your Navionics is. Mm -hmm. They'll be right dead spot they'll on be where they where say they're supposed, to be. supposed to be yeah and that is a lifesaver at night because every once in a while one of them buoys will sink and if it's supposed to be there 
it might be there, so steer clear of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they move, you know, they break loose and they're somewhere else anyhow. But uh, when they put them where they're supposed oh, to be, yeah. they're, they're right there, spot on. Sometimes they end up at the edge of the water and Parker hops on them and rides them like a pony. <laughs> <laughs> it has happened. That I could see. <laughs> Yeah, I just noticed my my laptop is actually even doing where my screen's starting to shut down. Maybe it's StreamYard. But yep, that's with, uh, Lance, Lance my McCoy, laptop did this morning when Freddie was on uh, Hog Legs Live. That's wild. Lance McGugai had put in chat earlier that he talked to support already from StreamYard, and the Android last update causing the black screen issue told them to turn off the battery saver mode next time uh, going line to, live to see if that helps. The problem with that is, is I've turned mine to the max of 10 minutes. There is no never anymore for the, battery right. for, for the display for it to not lock. So that feature is gone. Well, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah, that could be an issue. They'll, they'll end up once, the, if, if StreamYard has identified that as being an issue, you can guarantee they've got their coding team on the on to how to work around it. it I agree. With, with Android being open source, it, there's a good chance they'll get that one fixed pretty quickly. But yeah. In the meantime, it'll be a pain in the neck. Yep. Stephanie says, "I just want to get <clears throat> give a grateful shout out to Telly and Chris at Mendota. They brought me an FOA rod, and I got a 13 pound channel cat on." It our last night fishing. Good people right there. Thanks again, guys. Well, you're welcome, Stephanie. You're we welcome, were happy to do it. Yeah, that Telly sure is a sweet lady. <laughs> I thank you, Chad. You know, Telly, I am I am grateful for you for calling and telling Chris to do the stuff that he does because I know there's no <laughs> there's nothing nice about him unless you're around. Whatever. <laughs> Talk about a guy that was so good to you. Yeah, that that the, him mean, being nice to me lasted right? approximately fifteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my precious. <laughs> oh my Look at him; he's petting that rod. Oh, oh my wow. word! Holding it like a baby. Oh my man. man! Look at that. So it was I worth just, it. Though. Yeah. To make him cry during a live, that was worth it. Absolutely. Well, so Josh, you you haven't heard this story yet, but the original plan was, you know, we thought Lyle was going to be at Mendota, and I was going to wait until we were all sitting around camp, like the fish fry or something, and I was going to come walking up with that with that rod right in front of Chad and have Lyle sign it, oh, and then give it to Chad. He he would have. He would have really freaked out. <laughs> he probably oh, would have. Yeah. He probably would have tackled me before probably. I ever made it a mile. <laughs> you got to watch him tackle. He's a big guy, man. <laughs> I kick him in the shin. One of these days, somebody's going to see the wrath of Chad. And they're going to be like, "Man, he moves pretty quick for a big fella." Uh, I've seen Chad move real fast. We were out on the Ohio River in Chad's boat, and we were trying to get back <laughs> to the boat ramp. Shut and up. the river was full. Shut up. Don't even, he you don't need to tell that story. I'm telling no, that story. Oh, oh yeah. We, we want to hear it. The river was way up. It was running like crazy. Trees and Volkswagens and anything you could imagine coming down the river. God, you tell stories like I do. They're, right? This is, this is totally here, there's two barges coming down river, and we're trying to get back to the boat ramp, and he takes off across the river. And runs out of gas. Oh, wow. He's such a fabricator. He jumped out of his seat and was at the front deploying that trolling motor faster than I could realize what happened. Oh, wow. And that's where that came from for my little camera. That's icon. right. Both of you. <laughs> I said, because we ran out of gas. I said, who goes fishing and doesn't put gas in their boat? Oh, man. You, man. There's two things you should always do when you have a boat. When you come in off the water, stop and fill it up. Or when you're headed to the lake, stop and fill, fill it up. Fill it up. One or the other. And that George, was a I, I told Chris, because 
<laughs> I had gas in that boat. When we, and when we took off, I didn't pay attention, thinking my get my I was had like three quarters of tank gas. We got up to the where we was fishing, and I was like, I looked down and I'm like, holy cow, where'd all my gas go? So I don't know if my mind I just thought I had gas and I didn't, or if somebody siphoned my gas out one night. Well, you always have gas, Chad, but <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, went to, I was supposed to think that I? Yeah <laughs> Don't say that out loud Paul Betty has made it in the chat oh, And Betty somebody is. is saying hello to James said hi to I haven't Betty. seen James in here yet Mr. Dockery, sir, is he in here? I haven't seen yeah, Sean him, T said hi to Mr. Dockery, but I haven't seen I'm Dockery. sure he's watching and He's I probably Betty watching Greenwell's yeah. got a good trip hit over there. Yes, so get the gas, gas after your trip. Either way. So your hands don't smell like gas while you're fishing. That's I good. I agree. Idea. I agree. Same thing with the bug spray and sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, I tell you, I keep a bar of lava soap in the boat. And people think, well, that's old time stuff. Well, maybe so. But the smell dissipates off of that faster than mm -hmm. anything. And it really does clean your hands good and get all that fishy stuff off of it, but it don't hang around long Well, it just goes away, you know? So I, I'm pretty fond of that. I didn't know they still made lava soap. Oh yeah. yeah. They do. I used that a lot when I was a kid. We didn't have hand cleaners and yeah. fish oil and stuff like that then. Yeah. Well, when you, were, you probably had to make your own soap when you were a kid, didn't you? Oh you had to go to the top brother. of the mountain and get the lava, so I mean, it was... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good there, but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How do you know what to say after that one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just cannot get that drift sock to open. I, I don't, it's, that's crazy. That is wild. I mean, and that's, that happens a lot on the licking. It'll... Now, Chris, one of the things I've done when you get like that, I'll put my anchor out the back of the boat and then put my trolling motor on like one and a half, two, you know, depending on the wind, you may have to go up to three. You know what? That's put, not a bad idea. Just pull against put, your anchor. And put yeah. your autopilot on and pull against your anchor. And it'll that's keep not that, a bad idea. It, it'll keep that... Uh, Anchor line real tight to keep the boat straight, and you'll you'll eliminate a lot of that sway that you've got going on right there. That so, is not a bad idea at all. You're you're smarter than you look. Uh, you know, I try, I try. <laughs> the, the, the newer the um, trolling motor is, the better it'll work. Mm -hmm. And make sure you turn off that intelligent autopilot on those iPilots. Get it over to Legacy. I don't know why they put that intelligent one in there, but it's garbage. I don't like advanced. Very, very, very rarely do I use advanced. I mean, some you know, like spot lock and stuff like that defaults to advanced. If you record mm -hmm. a track and you run a track, it defaults to advanced. But it works well in those situations. But if it, you it, 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 knows to, it, it knows it would. If you're just trying to point and go, take it, put it in legacy. I prefer legacy 99% of the time. Yep. Parker said he had to bait Richard's hook in Mendota. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of that, gas. you know what? I might try that. Get gas on my hands. Somebody bait my hooks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe then you'd go fishing with us. Goodness. <laughs> Speaking of Freddie that, was, uh, Freddie was a very good first mate in Mendota. Every time we'd move spots, by the time we'd get to the next spot, he had every rod baited and fresh bait cut up. I didn't. And then when we'd load, by the time I got done closing everything up in the boat and got out, he already had everything on the outside of the boat done, ready to go. Somebody trained him well. Very I, nice. I tell you what, the last time that we were coming in, Dee and I were the last ones off the lake. And when we, I walked up to get my truck. Chris and him had already pulled out, headed up there, and he, Chris was up in the thing, and he's not mm -hmm. wrong. Freddie had that boat strapped down. And I seen him on the side the side of the boat with a with a little towel spitting on the boat and shining it. And <laughs> it, was, it was, I, I'm gonna give that credit to Nina. Yep. Nina. Yeah. Yep. 
better Sean Kelly Sean Kelly's life. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that pulling against the anchor idea. It, yeah, it works, oh, it works good. It works good. Yeah, you probably wouldn't in the inaccurate. You probably had to put it on like a, a half. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you about one, one and a half probably would be plenty. Yeah. Is that a, a 17 or an 18 foot, Chris? 17. 17. Okay. That what? It's 16 and a half. It's a 16 foot boat, but it's 16 eight. And how big a motor do you have on it? Uh, 90. I bet that thing a scream. Mm -hmm. uh, it does about 34. Really? Yep. It'd be faster than that. That's it, the fast as I had it. Down at Wiley, I took it from the house we all rented to the boat ramp, and it was doing like 67 miles an hour with me in it. <laughs> nice. Hey, I put the, Somebody hammer, had that lie to the list. hammer down on that boat, Lyle, and it looked like I was riding like this halfway through the lake. It was yeah, okay. so bad. It probably <laughs> looked like a Looked like a weeble wobble right in a toothpick. Yeah, if it's doing 67, <laughs> it's on the trailer on the highway. <laughs> oh, man. I got debris on my line. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. Let's see. What was, uh, see if he, how he handles that. What happens when you get on a boat with a service member with right. Dress right dress. <laughs> there we go. Well, this line may be coming in. I'm wondering if Parker pursuits. I can't remember. Did he catch that um, 80 on an FOA rod? Or that was a great fish he caught. That was on a mad catch rod. I was going to say I thought it was a mad catch rod. That was on a mad catch rod. <clears throat> great, uh, great fish for Jerry Parker yesterday. Great fish. Was. Here comes uh, J Dog and Freddie and Tara and Mason. I like how Freddie can visit everybody, but he can't make it down to the Mississippi meetup. He can't, this he can't get where the real fish yeah. and water are. I don't think Nina's going to let him stay away from home that, that many weekends in a row. Now, are you and Telly going to make it down next week? Yes. Yeah, we're going as long as the weather holds, and I'm going to get a hold of Jerry in the middle of the week and make sure that the river looks fishable. If it's, if it's wet, it's fishable, but... What's the weather going to be like? That's my word. Uh, well, the weather next week is going to be nice. That's was, awesome. They were saying that the river, the, I guess it was up pretty good and flowing real bad and trying to bank fish. They, they, they weren't real optimistic about it. Hopefully it'll come back down or whatever it needs to do, make it fishable. Yeah, it was it was up there. It's uh, Take a look here real quick for you. I'd like to welcome Richard Ward, Bad Catters Catfishing, into the chat. Richard, we hope that you're still feeling well and doing what good. Great to see you in mm -hmm. chat tonight. What's going on, my buddy, Richard? Richard Richard's good people. A lot. That's, that, 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 that's my one complaint about the <coughs> Minn Kota iPilot trolling motors is when you're spot locked in low current like this, when it corrects, it overcorrects. You see how mm -hmm. bad we're playing now? Yeah. It, it, it just, and it just, it'll just keep yeah. doing it until it finally settles back in that's yeah. why i keep a lot of slack in the line because the bait's not moving the bait's just sitting there i was wondering how you deal with that because that's it was one of the things that just gets me well if we weren't on the show right now i wouldn't be dealing with it <laughs> yeah we'd be moving yeah yeah, I hate that too. Oh man, when we sit there, we'll have two anchors out, even you know, and you get that boat sway going just back and forth. It drives me nuts. It drives me absolutely up the wall because I like my lines just tight. I do too. Well, we do too, but you know, you got to deal with the situation at hand. <laughs> That's those, home, that's those homeless people over there on the bank. Look at the hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris looks like if nothing changes, the uh, Mississippi be around the 27-foot mark. The 29-foot mark, it hits that action stage. So it's going to be a little bit – it's going to be up. If, if it is, the fish uh, will be I mean, we'll, we'll be there as long as the weather is going to be good. Oh, yeah. They think it's fishable. Well, I was talking to I was talking to Parker this afternoon about it, and uh, was asking him about launching there. I've never been I've never been down to it. He said that is one of the best places to launch. Said that that wing dam back there has a uh, 
makes it where you can launch into the slack water. So I may pull the boat over and give it a try. And if the current, if the current's up right now, it'd be the time to get out there and go bumping. So uh, we're not taking our boat. Our, well, yeah, we're not bringing our boat either. Really? Nope. I mean, we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna leave Friday morning. We'll be there Friday late afternoon Friday, so we're only gonna have Friday evening and Saturday to fish. Oh, okay. That's the only way to pull the boat. Yeah. We'll only have a little short amount of time to fish. How far is it for it for you, Chris? About six hours for us. Six oh, wow. hours. And Chad, it's six hours and eight minutes. Yeah, it's like an you hour. Don't have to be that exact. <laughs> <laughs> With, with the one stop that we will make, it'll be about six and a half hours. So one you're going to stop make. and do what? I'll probably stop, stretch my legs, get a fill up on gas, and you better stop at uh, uh, that bait shop down there by Kentucky Lake. I can't. It's not going to be open as late as I'm going to be driving. Oh, well, he won't. He won't have to make any bathroom stops with all that cheese that he bought at Mendota. Boy, that ain't no joke. That don't stop me from peeing. Oh. And you know, tonight I had some of that cheese. I made I made hamburgers this morning, this evening, and I put some of this morel cheese that we mm. got on it. Oh, was that it? Was good? Was it good? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Sounds <laughs> good. It does sound good. It's good. It I'm not morel, a mushroom Morel and leeks. Richard says when he don't have current, he double anchors, and that's what I do a lot of times. On the I've road. got to build me another anchor. I ca I had to cut the anchor line on one back during Chad's uh, Winter Blues tournament. I blame it on Chad, too. Yeah, I'm used to it. Everybody blames me. I blame right. it on Jerry Parker. Well, I, have never, I have never lost an anchor. I've had it on the Mississippi. I've had that thing buried. and Nope, I take Parker in the boat, anchor up, and I end up having to cut an anchor line. So. <laughs> I will do everything possible to not throw an anchor. Me too. Me too, because you know when you throw that thing in the water, somebody's got to pull it in. Yeah, oh, right. I <laughs> and I always it's feel sorry for Dee when she has to pull it up. It's not just that. I mean, this Licking River is not very big. And there's barges that come up in here, the gas barges. And when they come in here, there's no room. I mean, and you better, you better be able to get out of their way quick. You better be able to get out there. real fast. You know, today we, Freddie and, and J Dog and them were up here, and Telly and I were back by the gas barge. And they were, they texted us and said, Hey, that barge is coming. That so tug. we, or that tar, the tug was coming. So we reeled by the, we, we reeled our lines in. And by the time we got the last line in, he was coming around the corner honking his horn. Oh, wow. And and they they pay the most taxes, so they get the most yeah. right away. I'm not yeah. saying it's right; that's just the way it works. Well, they come up and well, they don't come up that Licking River slow. They come no, they down don't down it with with just a tug. So they got that yep. flat nose, and they're pushing, you know, five, six, seven foot waves right yep. in front of them. I mean, yeah, they, they are. It'll make you nervous because it'll make you real nervous. They're they're over half as they take up over half the uh, river, just in their width. That river's not very wide at all. I think Chad that they are people in chat that are recommending that you take a urinal with you. I need one. <laughs> Honestly, I thought if they made diapers my size, I'd just drive all night. Oh Lord, that's nasty. Chad saying, "Don't don't you need to stop?" That depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. So, Chris, Telly, I know you got. We just talked about the Mississippi meetup. What What does the power couple have planned the rest of the year? Do you have any other plans? Oh well, after Mississippi, yes. We're going back to Tennessee in July. Yep. Cool. Um, at the beginning of July yeah. and at the end of July, 1st of August, we're going to what, the Missouri because we're going to Iowa. Iowa. Oh, Missouri. Missouri. Oh, wow. Yeah, where's the Uncle Liv? Did you say you're yeah, going to by, by Lyle's house and not say hi? 
I don't know where Lyle lives. Southwest Missouri. Where are you going? We're going to go fish the Missouri River uh, with Uncle Lou. You know, that's a little out of your way, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. Well, let, let, let me get, we, we hope that we are able to do that. I mean, yeah. that, we'll have to make sure that everything, the conditions are right there, too, because that's a long, that, that's like 11 hours, I think. Yep. Oh, I'm not that far, so you can stop here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be on that north far end, out there, if you're going to be on the north end of Missouri, you need to stop by and aggravate Dockery. Hey. Um, there's a thought. Now, mm -hmm. I would be totally upset. It's one thing if if you go see Lee Reed. I, I mean, I get, <laughs> but if you go to Dockery's, you don't stop and see me. That's something all different. There. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see I highly we'll recommend going to see Lyle. Lyle knows good places to eat. Well, you yeah, know, look like this. We're not knowing where the places are at. <laughs> we have always eaten really good whenever we go to see Lyle and Cindy. So. Yeah. I just did that like 15 seconds ago. Damn it, Chris. <laughs> oh, wow. I yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in the land of lakes, man. You come over here and we go fishing. Yep. How far are you from like... Uh, Lake of the Ozarks. 45 minutes. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Truman's about an hour. Palm mm -hmm. is about 30 minutes. Uh, Stockton's about 30, 45 minutes. Got them all. That's something we've talked about doing is going to fish Lake of the Ozarks. Lake of the Ozarks is fun. It is fun. Um, I Don't like go it when better. the cigarette boats are out. I was yeah, going to say, I like if we can stay better, away from the pressure uh, motors. I think it's better in the fall and spring. Yeah, uh, but I fish it in the summer sometimes too. The, since COVID hit, there's a lot more boat traffic on it than there was before COVID hit because there's a lot of people who never went back to work. That's oh, right. Yeah. Working at home and they get extra time to go fishing or something. Boat ramps are a lot fuller than they used to be. It's a point I'm trying to make. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's all right. One of these days, all these boats will start going on sale. I think you're yeah. right about yeah, that. Yeah, I think I think they oh, will. Yeah. Chad's going to buy Mike, Mike and Greenwell said they've been playing a bumping bump trip for three years. We're going to make it happen one of these days, buddy. I promise you. I, Chad's going to buy one of those cigarette boats when they go on sale, and he's going to have rod holders all the way across the back of it. <laughs> why why, why else would he have a boat? <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's something to be, be said when you're out there on Lake the Ozarks. You're in a 21-foot boat. And you've got these cigarette boats passing. Do you feel like you're in a John boat again? And it's like, yeah, yeah I'm going off in this cove. I'm, you, yeah. No. Could you imagine <laughs> having one of them 30, 40 foot uh, cigar boats and rod holders? And, I mean, start fishing tournaments and there ain't nobody ever going to beat you. <laughs> Nobody's going to touch you. Yeah. Nope. I mean, those guys were, they were screaming up and down Lake of the Ozarks when we were out there. They were doing 80 or 90 mile an hour. Oh, yeah. Woo! They don't care it. if you got a little boat and they get no. real close to you. You get out of their way. Care. Yeah. Wow. That's right. <laughs> Kevin, that's right. Dragon <laughs> boat beneath an 80 mile an hour. <laughs> oh, man. Don't forget, everybody, that when we're done here, Mark uh, will be going over the Mendota trip on uh, the Catfish and Crappie podcast right after we're through. Yeah. Mark has an awesome guest this week. I think he does. I agree. I think when we when, when the show's over, we're going to switch back over to the dragging weights, and I'm going to see how far we can drag back towards the boat ramp without getting okay. snagged. We've drug we've drug up this through this bend in front of us before, and did fine, and we did all right. I mean, you're, I mean, when you're dragging baits, getting snagged is just part of it. Just that is part of it. It is. You just have to know that it's going to happen. Just hope yep. that you don't snag <laughs> them all at once. That's what happens you know, to me. They all snag at the same time. Been there, done that. I That's have gotten good. so good at dragging baits that I snag fish right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing right. It's amazing. Man, you snag fishing line, and that fishing line has fish on the end of it. I even I even snag other fishing line with fish attached to it. That's right. And I let D reel it in. <laughs> that from want to be outdoors says need to go to North Fork Lake. North Fork Lake. I don't know that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I, it's got great crappie and bass fishing. I don't know how the catfishing is down there, but that is one of the most beautiful places that you could ever be at. North Fork mm -hmm. Lake, 
uh, it's it's like a hidden secret for a lot of people, and it is just absolutely not. I've out. heard it in a nice lake down there. It is. It's very nice. Oh, it's gonna be a nice. <clears throat> I haven't been there much since I was a kid. My dad used to take us down there about every year because my granddad lived real close to it. It was a lot of fun. Chad is the best dragger. I don't know about the best. Is that mean I'm in drag or dragging bait? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you last week, Chad. You I missed gone. you. I know. I missed both. Yeah, we missed Lyle. I missed Lyle. Well, it's probably a safe bet that there's not going to be another Mendota trip that we'll miss. I, I, yeah. I say that. No, it was. But I hope, it's, I hope that's true because um, – it was really tough watching you guys all up there having a good time. I was glad no. you guys all went live. No. I mean, it seemed like it did not matter what time of day it was. I could turn on YouTube. One of y'all was live. Yeah, I was, I was forced <laughs> several times to go live. <laughs> he was. He was. <laughs> but, yeah, it was fun watching all of you up there. That's one thing about the, the new technology that we have today. If you're not able to go someplace and so your friends are out there fishing, mm -hmm. you can live vicariously your life through their fishing ability. Yeah. And if they're not f catching fish, you can sit back and say, man, if I was there. Oh, or yeah. if they're catching fish, you can say, damn, I'm going to remember where they was at. Yeah, I, I, was there, be, I mean, yeah. you can look at it a lot of different ways, and it's a lot of fun. And and you can go in chat, and if somebody's not catching a fish, you could say, hey, try this or this spot or go mm -hmm. here or go there. Or right. you can put a bunch of laughing now, I ain't telling you nothing. I'm not giving away my secrets. You know, you can do it any way you want, but it's still fun, and it makes it makes sitting <laughs> home a lot more enjoyable for a lot of people. Yeah, I know well, I, I kept turning, you know, I was supposed to be putting that uh, actuator in that truck. And I kept getting frustrated with that actuator. And that, that, I think I invented some new words last week, but I can't say it. Wow. But, um, you know, you get fed up with it, or I'd get fed up with that thing. And it's like, oh, let's get in there and see what Chad's doing. You know, and he was, somebody was live, you know, Chad yep. was live or somebody, Parker or somebody. Yep. It, it was, it was enjoyable for it me. It was a way to, to kick back. And then it, you know, I, I was on vacation all last week and did not wet a hook all week. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have one question for Chad. Uh -oh. uh, how many fish did you catch over 20 up there? One. One? I caught three. Here we go. Well, oh, wow. yeah, but you, 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 <laughs> no, yeah, but we've already discussed we're questioning the scale that you used. Well, it worked. You always question people's scales. Yeah. Yeah. You're after Parker, or well, now, yeah, that, that one Parker caught the other day, seventy nine tops. That was a great <laughs> fish, great fish. I, you know, that's a lot of fish to catch on the bank, and then rocks. Yeah. three fishes on. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. I need to get Dockery to come down, and I need to put that man on water skis. And pull him behind the boat because I think he's the perfect size for a topwater strike. Bait fish. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Uh, Bait dockery. <laughs> yes. And we'll just we'll just go flathead fishing topwater with dockery. <laughs> I think it would work. Oh man, I, I would like to film that if you don't mind. Uh, there would have to be multiple camera angles on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll run one. I, we'll I, even <laughs> put the drone up in the air for that one. So <laughs> Yeah, that would be uh, very interesting. Oh, Mikey, no, it, it was not by choice that I didn't fish on vacation. I, I, let me just say, you do not ever want to have to replace the uh, blower motor actuator on a on a Toyota Tundra. You don't want to ever have to do it. That's why they make mechanics. The the mechanic is a thousand dollars to do that job, Ooh. and I bought that part for one hundred and fifteen bucks. Now I learned some new words, and I got it put in by myself, so I yeah. saved nine hundred dollars. So you saved yourself nine hundred nine hundred dollars and became creative. Yes, uh -huh. there you go. Hey, Josh, before we get out of here tonight, uh, our, our guests that didn't make it tonight are they going to be available next week? I she should be. Okay. 
do we want to elaborate on that a little bit before we go? Yeah, we can do that. Um, guys, initially for this week, uh, my wife, Christina, was going to be on Catfish Weekly. And for those of you who don't know, she does on the side, she does professional photography. And, uh, and has been doing it for years, has been doing it since before I ever met her. And uh, we had talked about doing a show on fish photography, taking better fish pictures. And she was going through last night and getting all kinds of pictures or she could have stuff that she could talk about, about how to get your lighting right, get the angle right on there, and get the most out of your fish pictures. And uh, unfortunately, Hi. she ended up stuck having to work this evening until midnight. So, oh wow! So that prompted a uh, a reschedule on that one. But we'll get her on here and uh, let her teach her photography because she's better at it than I am. So, and in the meantime, Chris and Tilly, thank you so much for joining us on short notice. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. We have enjoyed this show with you two very much. Mm -hmm. Um. A lot of fun times. We got to pick on Chad a little bit. Telly picked on, or Chris picked on Josh a little bit. Yeah, so, I mean, it was just a good time. It made for glad. a great show. And I expect him to pick on me. That's just kind of the way yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I was glad you both could make it. So, uh, Oh, me too. It was very yeah. much fun. And uh, we didn't see you catch any fish, but you're out Almost. there. After Almost. 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 Okay. The, it happens like that sometimes. And the next it time does. you catch on here, maybe you'll catch three or four. Yeah. But and I'm gonna have, this, you'll come yeah, back. And I know where you're going to be next weekend. So, you know, any help right. during the show, I know where to go to find it a return to favor. That's, that's so. it. But we'd love to have you back on here when you guys are out fishing again. Be a lot of fun. Well, so, well, we'd be happy to be on here anytime you want us. Absolutely. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. We're going to uh, jump out of here. If you guys got any closing statements, Chad, Josh? We've got a brag. We got a bragging yeah, board. Bragging board nice still. Oh, damn, I keep forgetting about that. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, make sure that I know you've you got some good ones this time. Yeah, we've we've got some we've got some good ones this week. So let's go take a look at that. Let's do it. Welcome back, everybody. It's time once again to check out the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. This one's covering the weeks of May seventh and May fourteenth, two thousand twenty-three. We have some nice fish on the board this week, guys. You're gonna love them. Take a look. First up is Miss Shirley T with the 17 and one half pound catfish she caught during the ladies call out tournament. Congratulations Shirley, nice fish. Next up we have Austin joining us on the bragging board this week with a really nice 25 pound blue cat. Thank you for sending us a pic and sharing it with us. Shane from Little River Catfishing showing off fish this week. We've got a 39, a 27, and a 20. Great fish, guys. Congratulations. And Miss D Fields with a brand new 19 and a half pound new personal best channel catfish from Lake Mendota, Wisconsin. Congrats on the new personal best, D. Dan from 205 Wild Action sending us another beautiful Warrior River flathead. Dan has got those flatheads figured out down there. Great job, buddy. Ray from Cat Daddy King showing off a 72.6 pound Mississippi River blue catfish. That is one awesome fish there, Ray. Congratulations. Next up is my buddy Chad from Fields to Water with also a new personal best channel catfish of 25 and one half pounds. Caught at Lake Mendota. I still think Dee caught that fish and let him hold it. And my buddy Jerry from Parker Pursuits with an 80.09 beast of a blue catfish. Look at that thing. Don't forget, you too can be featured on the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. To be eligible, the fish needs to have been caught within the past 14 days. We take pictures of any species of fish. Send the information listed on the screen to pics at theweekendangler.com. Be sure to email your photo as well. We'll get it put up on the bragging board. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great week.
some very, very, very nice fish on there this week. Great. Oh, fish. yeah. Yes, yeah, they are. Good job uh, putting that together, Josh. Uh, Josh, so, you do a fantastic job with that. I like it a lot. Yeah, it looks good. Well, thank you. Very I try. Yeah, I try. That works. Well, I'm glad I brought him on board, everybody. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> I know it's getting real dark and it's hard for you to see, but well, by the time I get up there and set up the compacts, the show will be over anyway. So, Well, thank you guys again for joining us tonight. We appreciate it very much on short notice. Uh, Chad, you got any closing statements? Nope. Look, uh, right. Chris Kelly, love you to death. Thank you all for being a part of my life. <laughs> Well, thank you, Chad. Thank you, love Chad. You too, buddy. And we mostly, love you as well. Mostly, we'll mostly see you down. this weekend. All right. We'll see you. You too, Josh. Hope you show yep. up. A little. Yep. Yep. See we will then. be down there. So. All right, folks. Thanks for watching tonight. Be sure to check out the bait shop, followed by Panfish Nation on Thursday. And we'll be right back here next week on Catfish Weekly. Thanks again for watching. Have a great